Hi everyone, I'd like to welcome you to our webinar. I'm Warren Jolly with Casino Affiliate Programs. We're very excited for what we have lined up on today's webinar. Um, as a sneak peek to the upcoming BAC, Barcelona Affiliate Conference, today's webinar will be featuring one of the show's legendary affiliate learning sessions, the Demon SEO panel, How to Defend Against Black Hat Techniques. We'll be defining what exactly Black Hat SEO is, the, method, the methods this form of search marketing encompasses, and what you can do to detect Black Hat activities and provide you with defense strategies against Black Hat SEO. Our presentation will compile some general information on this topic and mainly feature an extended Q&A session with our guest speakers. So if you have any questions regarding the content presented or perhaps specific questions pertaining to your affiliate marketing business, you'll have the opportunity to post them to our SEO experts directly in the latter half of the webinar. Uh, you're welcome to submit your questions anytime throughout the presentation through the question panel in the GoToWebinar control area. Um, before we get started with our presentation, I would like to thank today's webinar sponsor, IGB Affiliates Barcelona Affiliate Conference 2011. BAC will be happening next week from Thursday, September 8th through Sunday, September 11th, and IGB is promising an excellent event. Bottom line, if you want to do business in the iGaming industry, this is the event for you. For operators, this is the perfect time to expand your network and meet new affiliates or take advantage of the face-to-face -face, face -face time with your best performing partners. As for affiliates, it's a perfect opportunity to find out how to get the best deals from new and current affiliate programs find out what your competitors are doing, and learn from experts and peers during the affiliate learning sessions and panel discussions. And in addition, all affiliates are invited to join the conference for free. Uh, the IGB affiliate series of events are renowned for delivering successful conferences from start to finish. There are always great networking parties, educational and valuable conference sessions, and everyone is welcome to enjoy the open bar offered in the afternoons. BAC is a fun and effective industry conference for operators and affiliates. Uh, which are part of the online gaming industry. While you still can, visit www.barcelonaaffiliateconference.com to register today. So for today's webinar, we have an incredible expert panel lined up. Uh, Cap is pleased to be partnering with Kay Schaefer, founder of KSO, KSOM, and Dave Naylor, founder of Bronco. As a background, our guest speakers, Kay Schaefer is one of Europe's authorities on internet marketing and SEO with a background in business administration and marketing. Kay is known for and specializes in improving search engine visibility using creative and unique link, link building strategies. Kay's portfolio of clientele include companies in and beyond the world of online gaming. And Kay will be leading the main presentation of, of uh, today's content in the webinar. Kay, welcome to our webinar. Hi, thanks Warren. Uh, and we also have Dave Naylor as guest speaker who will be participating in today's extended Q&A session at the end of the webinar. Dave started working in the SEO industry over 14 years ago. His main motiva motivational driving force is the belief that there is no point in having a site if it doesn't rank number one in the search engines. Uh, Dave has the reputation of being one of the best SEO marketers in the online world and has a proven track, of, uh, proven track record of success in the most competitive markets. Dave, I'd like to welcome you as well. Hi, guys. Uh, so without fur further ado, I'd like to allow Kay to take it from here. Hi. I want to talk today about um, Black Hat SEO, or better, how to defend against Black Hat SEO. Well, to start, I am not a Black Hatter, um, and I don't recommend for long-term business models to use Black Hat techniques. Today we want to learn to identify some of these strategies and techniques to defend ourselves against it. To start, I want to clarify and start with a definition of Black Hat SEO. And uh, there are some confusions about what this really means. After that, we are going to some strategies and techniques, um, obviously some newer ones, some older ones, some evergreens. And uh, the third point, uh, we talk a little bit about this. How does the how might these strategies affect you and your website? And following to how to detect these strategies. And finally, let's talk a little bit about, about defending against it. What is Black Hat SEO? Well, Wikipedia states that Black Hat marketing involves SEO activities that are against the norms of search engines. It is difficult for search engine alone to distinguish when Black Hat SEO is applied. I won't argue with that. What is a Black Hatter? There is a really nice definition from Stephen Spencer on an article on search engine land, which I really 
do you like? The Black Adder is the ultimate pragmatist. He doesn't concern himself with the ethics of spamming. He sees Google for what it really is. A global corporation looking to maximize its profits and its return to shareholders. Google Inc. isn't the government. Their guidelines are driven by profit motives, not by ethics or by the rule of law. Which leads to my personal definition. For me, Black Hat SEO is the use of techniques which are against the guidelines given by the search engines like Google. It is considered Black Hat SEO as long as no law is broken. This could, would be called crime. I wanted, wanted to make sure that everyone knows about what we're talking because especially here is there is a big confusion. A lot of people um, think of some strategies like hacking web pages and injecting links and uh, yeah, DOS attacks are black hat SEO. In my opinion, this is not. And I want to work today with this definition. Now let's talk about some of these strategies and techniques that I use. Obviously, we can't talk about all, so I picked some of you for you. Basically, Black Hat strategies are short-term strategies. They try to reach quick results with positive ROIs. This is obviously the main strategy because Black Hat is not liked by search engines like Google. So they have to consider that or the algorithms or Google themselves um, just derank their websites or just de-index them or even users like you uh, just go to Google and report these sites. So they need to be very effective. That's why I really did like uh, the pragmatism of the black errors. They need to be very effective to, to reach quick results with positive ROIs. So to reach these, they use strategically, you know, their main strategy would be automation. Automation. They to, to automate everything they can to gain benefits, mainly time benefits, cost benefits out of it. They're using tools programmed by themselves or there are a couple of tools in the market that they just can buy. Obfuscation, obfuscation is one strategy. They try to hide, hide the, what they're doing, hide their referrers, hide their networks, hiding their tactics just to keep their website running a little bit longer, gaining profits a little bit longer. Negative SEO, Google bowling. This is also a possible strategy. Having a normal whitehead website and getting rid of the competition by bowling then around. Or one of the strategies even might be having their money site out of the reach of the search engines. By telling the search engines not to index them, not to no follow, no index, they're out of the reach of the search engines. They can't be punished. But the websites, just because they're not in the index, are not are still reachable for users. And the ways the traffic is transported to this website might be black hat ways. Let's talk about some techniques used to fulfill the strategies. Building websites with nearly 100% automation. As stated before, automation is one of the main strategies. So what techniques are used to, do, to, to fulfill the strategy? Scraping. Well, scraping, everyone says scraping is not working, scraping is not working. A couple of days ago, or a week ago, Matt, Cut, Matt Cutts um, are asked the community to submit pages which do scraping and 
outrank normal pages to better the algorithm to algorithmically filter them out, which obviously tells us that there's still a big problem with this type of sites. Spinning is just doesn't mean maybe the, the content you scraped has been spin around. There's some of um, some techniques used to get still some sense into the sentences and the better the techniques, the difficult the more difficult it is to filter it out algorithmically. Automated website setups. Well, imagine um, usually the usual way is register a domain go, I don't know, GoDaddy uh, to GoDaddy, register your domain, then point the domain to your web server, upload uh, CMS like WordPress, go to your FTP, upload it, get a theme, and get your first entries. Well, there are systems that this can be done just by one or two clicks. Imagine just uh, entering the keywords you need the content from, and all the rest will be done automated. Which leads to the next technique, aggressive link building. Aggressive link building still is one of the main leverage used to get these websites to rank for. One we discussed as uh, one of the strategies uh, was Google Bowling, so this will be building massive links to competitioners. This is one way to get rid of them. But obviously, aggressive link building also includes well, block common spam, forum spam, bookmarks, Wikipedias, uh, wikis, uh, gasp of spam. This all automated, as discussed before, can be massively done. Or something like link hijacking is also highly aggressive. What is link hijacking? To give you an example, um, if a page, uh, let's say uh, casino.com, is just um, wants to, uh, we, we send emails to all the partners, link partners casino.com has, so telling them we move the domain to casino.org while casino.org obviously is owned by the black hatter. This is called link hijack. Nice trick. Cloaking. Cloaking is still a word and technique used for example, to hide the money side, I stated before in the strategies, to reach, uh, to get the traffic to them by using massive amount of cloaking websites. Cloaking can be used to optimize one website for different uh, search engines, so it only, uh, always delivers the best optimized content to each website and to each search engine. Or even something like submitting fake consumer complaints. As far as quality is a factor, submitting fake compl uh, complaints for the competitioners is a neat way to say he's a bad one. But how does all these strategies and techniques affect you? You as a website owner, you as an affiliate, or you as a casino or sports book. One way might be affiliate ID indexing. It's kind of a parasite SEO, which obviously can only be used if the casino page is not secure. What do I mean by that? Taking the example of casino.com, uh, imagine you have the affiliate ID one two three, and casino.com slash FID question mark one two three is indexable. 
So we would do build up massively links to casino.com, our affiliate slash our affiliate ID, and casino.com slash slots, slash sign up, slash our affiliate ID, which might result that these pages rank higher than their original page. So, in the rankings will appear casino.com affiliate ID 123. This result obviously in paying an affiliate for his own rankings, for your own rankings. Another way it might affect you is when the black header ranks better than you. Obviously, you're having a website and you're getting into trouble because your rankings decrease in favor of websites that build up uh, or web pages that are built up by black hat techniques. Your rankings uh, decrease. This might result in lesser traffic and lesser earnings. As stated before, how, how link hijacking works, or this might be done directly to your website or to our other linking websites. Websites linking to you or even some not known organizations and these link hijacking then would be used against, well, in favor of your competition's website. If it is used against you, you will see that your links decrease the other rankings decrease, and if there is a duplicate of your website, obviously even your reputation might get damaged pretty hard. This results in massive ranking problems, as it is not that easy to get all these links back up. And even then, a rapid decrease and then a rapid increase in the ranking uh, in links is not a nice thing in your domain's history. Negative SEO, it's obviously, if you're affected by this, you'll probably, your links increase massively. Well, you would, which is usually a nice thing, but if they're all from bad neighborhood, bad websites, out of topic, you will lose a lot of trust. And this re might result in keyword penalties or even direct penalties or subfolder uh, penalties. These are some ways Black Hat SEO might affect you. But how do you detect them? Actually, we already, uh, we already spoke about links, about traffic, about uh, stats. Stats are what you have to monitor. Monitor your own statistics as often as possible. These, your own statistics, can be used to detect possible attacks. To give you some examples, Google Alerts. Google Alerts you can use for a couple of reasons, but one might be putting in your brand or your domain, what happens? If something, someone um, is linking to you, writing something about you, you get a notice. For example, if someone is building up massively links using your domain name or something like that, your UL, you get a notice and you might react in some different ways. Your link growth, as we spoke about in Google Bowling, for example, if you monitor your own link growth, which is not only for Black Hat uh, detecting against Black Hat, but also for your own sake, for the White Hat, a very important feature, you can use a lot of tools 
to give you some examples, Majestic is a long tool which is long in the market. Um, SEMOS has this tool with uh, the Open Site Explorer. There are a couple of features even free. And Systrix is uh, more known in the European market as well, especially the German market as it is a real nice tool to monitor your links, uh, main linking sites and everything. By monitoring your link group, where are your links coming from, how many, this can be help you to detect if someone is trying to attack your website. Ranking. Obviously, you will feel it in your rankings if you're attacked. Or if a black hat website is outrunning you, then you also see your rankings decrease and someone else is putting in front of you. So it's very important to at least monitor your major keywords. And I'm not only talking about having to know where you are ranking, but also where your competition is ranking, if they are moving. And if you don't want to take a screenshot every day, there are a couple of tools that will help you. Raven is a very cool tool, which is um, inter uh, which which covers the international market, and but uh, several search engines, which can can be used to monitor your rankings every week, which will be saved, so you can revise even the history. AWR Advanced Web Ranking is a tool you could uh, use on your servers locally for yourself so you have access to the data only you by yourself. This might for some security reasons or some personal reasons be a better choice. Or uh, again, Systrix uh, for the German market is a nice uh, tool in our European market. Traffic. Traffic is what we usually monitor every day. But to have a look, especially at some data spikes, some spikes here and there, why is it decreasing? What is happening? Is it, put it in relation to the rankings. It's not only having a look at each one of these statistics, but putting them into a relation for to each other. Taking your Google Analytics statics, statistics and comparing them with your rankings. This gives you the idea if something happens and what. You can also use server statistics tools for traffic monitor, but they are not that exact. They have so certain their difficulties. Uh, or PVIC if you don't want to use uh, Google Analytics. This is still um, a very popular way if you don't want to use Google. And finally, defensive strategies against all these attacks. Well, to, to defend, for example, you know, against this uh, parasite SEO attack, you just have to do your homework. Have your own website optimized. Just to get rid of these parameters and the URLs will help you so, to do this, there are various options or webmaster's tool or uh, just using the canonical tag. So, the basis to defend, again, everything is to be, yeah, to have your website make your homework good SEO, have a good on site SEO. We talked about it. Your stats monitor your stats, your ranking, your links, your traffic. This is something you should do either way, not only 
to defend against backhand, but to better your SEO, to better your rankings, to better your to see new strategies, to seek more traffic sources. Build up trust to your website. The more trust, the, dif the more difficult it is to tack you, to de-rank you, to, to make you less worth. Be better. Always be better than they. How? If you see actions, learn from their actions. Learn what they are doing. Monitor it. Understand it. And react. Be better. And finally, your option is to use the Google Spam report. But as stated in the beginning, this is part of their strategy, short-term strategy. So if you do it, make it fast. To make it fast, you have to see it quickly. To see it quickly, follow the ideas. Thank you. If anyone has any okay. questions, so I just want to open up. Yep, we'll open it up now to, to questions. So um, again, if you have any questions, please go ahead and submit them into the uh, GoToWebinar. There's a question panel, and if you submit those, we'll see them straight away, uh, and we'll get to as many as we can. We have about um, about 20 minutes to half an hour left. Um, the first question is users asking, I've heard about terms such as gray hat SEO. What constitutes gray hat versus black hat? Do you want me to take that one? Okay. Yes, please, David. I yeah. would Again, love to. Because you obviously you've been just talking forever, and I'm sure you needed a quick drink of water or something. Um, <laughs> the whole hat thing kind of like confuses me a little bit because it's like you've got white hat, which is what is supposed to be within Google guidelines, and then black hat, which is well, they're doing all the naughty stuff. And I guess grey hat is um, a white hat that's touching on the black hat stuff. So I would say a, a grey hat is anyone who's basically out there buying links, I guess, um, and not doing anything that's not toward crazy. Um, but obviously, in Google's eyes, that is black hat. You know, what I mean? because if you're buying links, then that's black hat, and you should be banned for it. Um, unless obviously you're buying links through proper channels like Yahoo Directory where you're paying for a submission in a directory but Google let that pass as long as you're doing it for the directory submission and not to improve your search engine rankings because it's against the terms and conditions of Google to improve your search app to manipulate them so from an SEO point of view everything I do I suppose is block up because everything I'm trying to do is to manipulate the search engines to make my client sites the best site for the search terms that humans are going to search for. So great hat, I would say, is people that are, that are breaking the guidelines, um, but not out there going absolutely crazy. Um, they don't have a build and burn strategy where it's like build something and then destroy it, build it again, destroy it, build it again, destroy it. Okay. Next one. Um, how come only some some obvious black hat sites got hit and others stayed clear when uh, Google went through its Panda update? Um, I think that Panda's only maybe sixty percent efficient. To be honest, uh, you look at what the footprint uh, sites that were totally burned. And you look at some of the footprints of the sites that got away, and you go, "Man, that's so close! How, how did they get out? You know, how did they not get caught up in this?" I think that if Google so like totally trashed every site that were that fell into the Panda footprint, they'd lose a lot of content, um, and they need to return some content. You know, what I mean, it's like um, what sort of websites are going to really write about how to make an omelet? You know, what I mean, you're going to get poor quality websites in there. So it's six percent efficiency, um, and sometimes they just get things wrong. Sometimes you can hide uh, stuff from Panda that would normally get you panderized as well. So over affiliated websites, if you know to hide that, then that's a bonus. And Google tried uh, to well steer their 
um, ponder a little bit more. So it got, I think, four or five updates already. So they try to catch more of them, but they still are trying. So it sounds like it's your belief that as Google continues to update its panda algorithm, more and more sites that are black hat will get sort of captured in that. Not only panda, but as I stated in the presentation, that they're using or they're, they're trying to find more ways to discover black hat website like the scraper sites. So right now, well, like I said, Matt Cutts asked for the help to submit scraping sites um, to get rid of them in an algorithmic way. Okay. Understood. Um, what do you define as buying a link? If you exchange content, um, you're not you're not paying with money, but you're paying with content. Does that does that sort of attribute towards yeah, Black Hat that, SEO? Yeah, that's fine. You know, I mean that that's uh, link. Look, it is like not paying cash. If if I said you link to my blog and I will send you, I don't know, a Mont Blanc pen. Two hundred quid's worth of pay. Um, people would link to me, and they wouldn't link to me otherwise. So if I approach them and say, "Look, can, can I give you content, um, and will you link back to me?" It's the same thing. You know, it's all about the intent. Um, that's what Google's always been about. You know what I mean? So uh, if the intent is to give them content to get a link, then yeah, you're trying to. Uh, Game the search engines, and therefore you're uh, erring to the black side of the um, SEO world, unfortunately, in Google's eyes. So, it, I guess, in our experts' opinions, how, how do we, how does one build rank for web page without link buildings? Is actually a question. But uh, what would be your advice um, again, without without even nearing the gray hat or black hat SEO side of things? Build build the brand. Build a brand. It's the only way you can do it these days, unfortunately. Without, if you want to be absolutely, even then some brands got burned. But if you want to be a hundred percent secure, you build brand and authority. And then once you've got that authority on the website, on-page SEO will will rule the roost. You know what I mean? You look at something like Wikipedia. They don't do link building, but they rank for everything. You know what I mean? They rank for Viagra. They rank for Online casino, they'll rank for UPS, they'll rank for upholstery, they'll rank for chairs, they'll rank for everything because they've got massive brand and massive authority. Um, the link structure internally favours Google, um, and people link to them as a as a resource point. So you don't, you know, they don't have links to everything, but they pretty much rank for everything. Uh, which is like the prime example of the big brand. And when you have this trust, usually you can get away with a lot more of the grey hat thing, like building up links or buying links in an intelligent way. With the trust mm, and your brand, it is a lot more easier to get Google forgiving you. Yeah, Google don't want to ban people like Expedia. They don't want to ban people like British Airways. They don't want to ban people like Bank of America. You know what I mean? It's like people expect to find those websites for certain search terms. I mean, that's what the Vince update was all about. You know, it's like you're trying to take away anchor text links and, and making the brand authority more prevalent. Um, and it, it worked to, to some extent. And they distinguish between different markets. Like some brand m might be very popular in Germany, and the same brand started rising in the uh, UK, and the website got punished by Panda uh, in the UK because, well, because of link building strategies, without being such a brand, with the same trust like in Germany, the, s the same. Brand in Germany uh, got got a boost by Pen. Yeah, I've, I've seen that as well. So 
dating areas and stuff like that. I see that sort of stuff. So I think um, this is related to a question that was asked, but most affiliates probably listening to this webinar are thinking um, in the in the online gambling space, it's it's very obviously costly and um, time intensive to build a brand, build a brand, if you will, um, and and to compete for terms like online gambling or slots or roulette or you know pick your favorite term there, um, you would need something in the order of 10,000, 20,000 links. Um, I think that you know whatever the number is, it's quite significant. So how does one go about building a brand then? I mean, what in, in your advice, if, if you were going to start today as an affiliate and uh, you were setting out to build a brand, what, what are the steps that you would take? Uh, personally, I would manipulate Google News. That's where I would start. Um, start getting one box domination. Uh, so you're not really trying to rank for that search term. You're trying to trigger the one boxes that Google put in there. So things like imagery, so you get your imagery boxes in there. Video, get my video boxes in there. Uh, but news, uh, I, I always see you know, good news articles hitting there straight away. So a good writer and start basically looking as a long-term investment. And then once I've got my brand up for the, the new, you know, from a news point of view, that I was getting good traffic. So, I mean, I, I've seen affiliate sites, and I shouldn't really say it, but it's, getting. 30, 40,000 uniques a day via news channels. Um, you know, just from getting one boxes, making sure that, that monitoring the search terms, one of one box appears for that, pushing articles, you know, having stacked articles ready to go on certain subjects. So if, uh, I don't know, David Beckham gets caught playing bingo at one of the big bingo sites, um, straight away you, you start pushing out bingo and Beckham. Uh, news feeds and um, you'll dominate it. So, and then people do bookmark that sort of stuff. Once you start getting into news feeds, you will build up natural um, scraper sites that will take your content and go after you a little bit. But if you play the game with those guys and say, "Look, I can give you content as long as you bring back to it, you bring back to us, and I give you unique content, uh, double the feed." I'm not. Sorry. I wouldn't go down the route of spinning it. Uh, but you know, just get a couple of low cost uh, rewriters on the case. So it's like, there's my article. I want five copies of the article um, accredited to me. So I'd, I'd push that way. And I wouldn't affiliate it to start off with. I wouldn't, I'd, I'd keep it as clean as possible. So I'd take a wad of cash and say, right, that's my money that, to seed this. Um, once I've got my, my, my brand deck being my, that going, then I'll start feeding offers into my RSS and push it out that way. We'll keep the site pretty much clean um, and, and build it that way. Okay. Okay. Any thoughts? Well, uh, I fully agree. It's a very nice uh, tactic to build up a brand, especially um, to to get known by Google as a brand, and you don't need to do a lot of link building, well, in a in a black hat way, against Google Adlines to do this. You get obviously as basis, you need a good design and a good logo, something like that. I've seen a couple of websites always starting well with uh, already known WordPress template and um, just a Photoshop logo, um, which obviously doesn't mm, convince everyone that you're the new brand. So um, be better. Do it quality style. Even though if it, it needs more time investment, even some more, more money investment, this is the way to go if you're looking for long-term uh, return of investment tactic. I mean, I mean, the flip side of it as well, of course, is that you, you obviously, if you're starting out and you don't have that wad of cash, then I'd most probably go down the route of expired domains, throw content at it, and really so I kick the hell out of free links into it and just sort of hope that it will pop for a week, then get burnt, and then obviously you're hoping to have another one in the background. Um, so you have total build and burn, you know, 10 websites a day. Just keep pushing automated, bang, 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 bang. 
until you get the affiliate revenue up to a situation where you can say, right, I can start using that money now to start building my real website, uh, you know, by exit traffic and stuff like that. Anything that you can turn a dollar on. Um, you can start by using long tail tactics, as they are easier to, to reach good rankings on on long tail keywords. Uh, not going for casino, but uh, for casinos uh, recommended by David Beckham. This uh, might be a lot easier to to get a rank number one from it, and getting your income to, uh, as Dave said, to get to build up your final. Website. Yeah, I mean, most of the black hats that I've known over the years have all built big war chests to actually build and develop something that you know I mean, that they can actually push to market and make a, a living out of. Because most black hats know, you know, it's, it, it's a short term business. Um, you might make a million quid out of it, but it's one day. They're going to catch you, and you'll go on a watch list, and everything you do, um, they'll be, you just feel like they're one step ahead of you all the time. So you can't, you know, you've got to be really, really good to stay off Google's radar if they decide to put a human on you and track you down. So yeah, build a war chest, and then abuse Google News with uh, decent, good content. Look at the syndicators and the aggregators of new stuff. Uh, they got on the BBC from the UK point of view. I'm sure that a lot of like the German um, news sites will syndicate through different syndicated methods as well. You know what I mean? So just push it that way to start off with. Get into Google Dave, News. Dave, do you have any quick tips for affiliates to get their sites into Google News? Just maybe, maybe you can just spend 30 seconds on just the basics. Um, obviously, you need to have newsworthy content. Don't affiliate it. Um, keep the content really clean, uh, very simple. You need to have an editor's page and uh, with like contact details on. They like the authenticity from that. Um, you can use uh, sitemaps. Uh, that really does help. And basically push it. You know what I mean? Just kind of like once you've got the keep it or either put it on like a new subdomain so that it's it's clean. It's away from everything else. Don't. Don't try to sell. The biggest problem that people have is they try to sell out of the new stuff straight away. Don't take the traffic and then look at how you can incentivize them also on your website. Um, Odesk is most probably a friend on on the new stuff. Get people around the clock so you basically follow the sun mentality. Have a couple of different editors in different areas and basically set up keyword lists so they can say, right, if this keyword in my news feed starts triggering a one box, I need to get an article in there and push it. So you're 24 7. It's really hard to automate that sort of thing, but old desk is so cheap, you know what I mean? It's uh, it's easy to push. But getting to Google News is easy, keeping in there is the tricky part. You know, you just got to keep that content uh, level high. And obviously, Google News doesn't mean that you're ranking organics, are two different setups, but there's a quality signal there. So, good content to start off with. Don't over affiliate and have an editor's page. It can be a falsified editor's page. It doesn't need to be anything like true. I mean, you still bear on the side of grayness. Um, but yeah, that's where I would start. Okay. Dave, we're just getting some feedback from the audience. It's a little bit hard to hear you. So, if there's any adjustments you can make on your microphone, um, that would be great. I could most probably just speak louder. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> so, sounds a little better. <laughs> Thanks for that. Um, next question: Is it possible that if someone tries to aggressively build links to your site to try to Google bull you, uh, would it be possible that you could actually improve rankings and have the opposite effect uh, that the, I guess, the Google bowler intended? Yes, most definitely. Okay, that's cool enough. Um, so another question, after watching this webinar, I suspect that I was the victim of some black hat techniques like Google Bowling several months ago. Is there anything specifically that I can do at this this uh, date to make corrections and gain trust again? You need human intervention. So you really do need to uh, open up a channel with a, a real Googler. I mean, there's loads on Twitter. You know, I mean, there's a, 
uh, maybe it's John Moo or Matt Cooks. Uh, there's, a, I, there's a few, you know what I mean? But you need to get a human to start to speak to. And, and if you can prove to them that you were Google Bold and that you just weren't aggressively link building, um, then yeah, you know what I mean? They, they can look at it. For some companies who use Google AdWords uh, and have their Google AdWords partner at Google, this might be a way to communicate with them about SEO as well. Okay. Uh, Kay, I believe this question is for you. Um, will Majestic SEO open up an API uh, once the site explorer from Yahoo goes away? They've got an API. Sorry, Kay. Yeah. <laughs> You're faster no. than that. <laughs> yeah. I use I use it. You know, it's, I think it's like five hundred pound a month. Um, yeah, and it, you can basically. It, it, sorry, Dixon. It's a crap API. Um, it, it's it's almost like their web interface, and you download an Excel spreadsheet. Um, but you can filter it all, and you can you can drill it down. But they do have an API already. It's expensive. Yeah. Any idea how much it is? Five hundred pounds a month. Five hundred pounds, yeah. Oh, sorry, five hundred pounds a month. Thank you. Um, great. Next question: um, How long does it take for Google to identify a site which is considered black hat and go ahead and delist it? Oh, how long is a piece of string? I've seen them catch them within minutes of being launched, and I've seen websites out there the five years and going strong. You just can't. You just don't know. It's it's impossible to to measure that. It's okay. Unfortunately, hack sites they're they're getting quick on. Yes, that's true. Right. Um, so next one, um, affiliates seem to be in for a difficult future in the Google search engines. Are they not? Um, no matter what they do, they'll still be. I think you meant. Um, mediator at the end of the day, even though they try to make their stuff unique. So, yeah, I, guess I mean, what the user's saying, sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, it's like Google, as I said many, many times over, uh, they just don't know how to handle affiliates. I mean, to, to, in Google's eyes, and I'm pretty sure that, well, uh, an ex Googler <laughs> told me this, um, in Google's eyes, Every time an affiliate website is ranking, they're not doing their job properly. Uh, Google's not doing their job properly because it, it, you're ranking for search terms to send traffic from your website to the merchant. Google should be able to find the merchant and rank it for those keywords anyway. So you're like a parasite within their world and they just hate you. You know what I mean? It's like it's a, it's an awful situation to be in. And one of the things that Panda did was it, it didn't only hit poor content websites, it hit really good content websites that were over affiliated, that they felt were just too ad driven. You know what I mean? It's like that the, the, the downstream traffic from that website was just going to iTunes or it was just going to an um, Commission Junction or it was just going off to uh, 888 or it was just going off to Party Poker. And they looked at it and it was like, no, that's an affiliate website. Dampen, dampen, dampen. So, yeah, as affiliates, we're in for a really, really rough ride at the moment. Um, and we've got to really try and hide um, our affiliate efforts. The biggest problem with that is, is that Google have got two bars, they've got uh, Wi Fi data, they've got Gmail accounts, they've got Google Plus, um, you know, so you're signed in when you're searching. It's really hard to hide the up and downstream traffic, um, so that's that's going to be the main biggest problem and as, for affiliates. And as you said before, if you do focus on, for example, good good news, or if you do uh, focus on quality, um, you can provide more quality as an affiliate, even though. Um, they're hated by Google. Uh, you can be the one um, to provide the content that is missing, that the providers can't give you, like reviews. A casino review can't be given for from the casino himself. So uh, this needs to be done from someone else. 
So this might be one niche to be done. Just it's do like, it high heavily, quality. Yeah, I mean it's heavily fought after the review side of things. You know, so how do you view the latest downloadable slot? You, I mean, it's it's hard. You know, I mean, there's no two ways about that. Um, and you look at the gaming channel in, in general. You know, what I mean, it's like review sites are there. You know, what I mean, but they do they bounce in and they bounce out. They bounce in and they bounce out. It's almost as if Google's like a B split testing them all the time. It's like, is this good for the user experience? Mm, let's see what it's like without that in there. Are, are we getting clicks? Those are we getting second page indents and things like this? So I, I, they, they test all the time. You know what I mean? So it, it's hard. It, it's going to be harder. I mean, I think the Ajax is going to be the affiliates' friends, um, where we present good quality content and then we use Ajax to bring in the offers and use Ajax to keep them within our site while they sign up and do the rest of the deal and then we close the Ajax window down and leave them on our website so the, the stream traffic doesn't look so bad in Google's eyes. Uh, bounce rate is important as well. Uh, just look at Google, don't, I've got many ranking signals but they've also got many quality signals and I think quality signals is something that we really do overlook a lot of the time as SEOs and you know, things like active authoritative Twitter users retweeting your stuff, that is a quality signal in Google's eyes. Uh, you know, it's like bounce rate is another quality signal in Google's eyes. And a lot of time I get the, the, the answer, it's like, yeah, but I don't have Google Analytics on there, they don't know what my bounce rate is. They do if they send you the person and they come straight back to Google, they can work out the bounce rate. They can look at the overall impressions of Google's page what the click throughs is for the ads, what the click throughs for the organics are, and what the bounce backs are for those organics. They track everything. So you need to really look at how to keep people on the site longer. Um, I've seen websites recently trying to stop people clicking on the back button. Um, that's crazy because then you've got no bounce rate and you're 100% and Google's going to go, oh, hang on a minute, you're messing with our users, you, you're gone. Um, so look for what quality signals time on site, things like that. Okay. And I apologize, Dave. Now that we can hear you, it's a bit louder. Would you just uh, repeat those few bullet points on getting into Google News without going into just too much detail? Yeah, so don't affiliate the content. Keep the, you know, don't even attribute the content. So if you've seen a story on CNN, um, rewrite it, use it as your own article. Set up an editor's page, um, contact details. Set up a news sitemap XML, get it in Webmaster Tools, and basically there's a, a really just submit form. Nine times out of ten, you'll go straight into Google News. It's very easy to get in there. It's keeping in there. So, like I say, don't affiliate the content. Keep the content really clean, good copy. Use a, a, what I call basically follow the sun mentality. So use Odesk to find editors in different parts of the world set up your keyword list for the stuff that you want to trigger for the Google News one box and then basically as as content triggers get the people at the right time zones to be pushing that content uh, but keep it clean structured well and don't affiliate it don't try to monetize to start off with thanks for that um, this will be our last question I've used 301 cloak links as my affiliate links. Are those still seen as an affiliate link? No, um, they're following they... them. And they're following 302s as well on affiliate links. Really, yes. you, you, you've got to be. It's, it's, I mean, if you're using the, if you're the merchant and you, people used to use 301 on the affiliate links into the merchants to get a boost. That's almost dead now. It, you know, they really kind of like clamped down on that. And I've seen some like negative equity passed in through that back door as well. And if you really want to defend yourself against black hat stuff, you've got to try and not take that equity now because it's one of the easiest things to do for someone that wants to attack you is basically spam blogs all over the place with affiliate IDs that will pass equity back into your site and it can be toxic. Um, so Google really dampened down on that. Also, if you're the, the affiliate website 301 and your link's out, or 302 new links out on blog pages, 
I've seen Google run through a 302, a robots.txt block page out on a JavaScript counter into iTunes and still attribute the iTunes content to the affiliate page by following a whole load of trickery. Um, they're getting really, really good at, at finding out where A to B to C to D to E, how it all links together, even when you're using Ajax is about the only one that I feel that I can trust at the moment um, to hide anything efficiently. Perfect. Um, we'll, we'll go ahead and wrap up now. I want to thank everyone in the audience today for attending today's webinar. We appreciate the excellent questions to make up such a great Q&A session. Um, Kay and Dave, thanks again for being our guest speakers and for, for, sorry, for, for, for providing such excellent content on the ever so controversial topic of Black Hat SEO. Uh, and once again, Thank you to our sponsor, IGB Affiliates Barcelona Affiliate Conference, for making this webinar possible. Thanks again, everyone. Uh, have a great day.